Hello class, this is Bashar Yassin and today I will be representing to you our teamwork about Planet Reebok case study. About the company and I'll be highlighting the points that we will be using later in the case study. So Reebok is a US company. It is international but it's based in US. Uh, originated in 1980. It has variety of products uh, from sportswear to professional sport accessories, uh, kids playground, and it distributes through uh, Reebok own showrooms as well as um, other uh, stores and distributes in the United States and internationally. So, um, it is international company, US based, and it has variety of product. Um, it distributes internationally and in the United States through its own stores and through uh, other third party stores. What is our case? What are we studying here? So, in 1993, Reebok uh, launched that big campaign in three major European countries. Um, the problem with the campaign, the campaign was that uh, the campaign was confusing, inconsistent, and as a result, uh, the message did not find its way to the regular European consumer. So it was inconsistent, it was confusing, and it did not reach the regular European consumers. Let's here take a quick look at the factors um, in Europe at 1993. Actually, 1993 was a very interesting year in European history, and we will find out why. Demographics. Europe had historically low birth rate, and immigration from outside and inside Europe was at its pinnacle. 90s, the 90s have seen a lot of immigration inside Europe itself and uh, from other country, from other continents to Europe. Economic factors. Um, we'll find out why in a minute. In 1993, uh, Europe had, uh, was about to, fight to face its biggest economic booming. And yet, Europe was not producing most of what they are consuming. Social, cultural issues. So, um, after the fail of Soviet Union, the US made products uh, found its way to most of Europe and it was favorable by most Europeans. National factor. Uh, as we mentioned before, that most European, uh, that Europe did not produce most of what they consume, basically because of the limited land, limited resources, and actually even limited population. Technological factor. Uh, in the 90s, not uh, the technology was not, let's say, distributed equally around the world like what we see today. Uh, basically, it was the US, Europe, and Japan uh, had the pinnacle technology where, uh, like most Europeans, maybe had computers or access to computers, where, for example, in other third world countries, it's very unlikely to see someone who is familiar with using computers in 1993. Political and legal. This is uh, what is interesting actually in 1993. Uh, basically, 1993 uh, have seen the fail of um, Berlin Wall, so uh, 20, more, 20 million more East uh, Germans uh, have been added to the West German population. Um, the um, closed uh, Soviet Union. Uh, collapsed, so now it's more open for import and export 
to the rest of the world. After understanding the environment that Reebok was trying to market in, let's go understand Reebok itself. What are the strengths for Reebok? Basically, Reebok was a well-established company, so taking risks was not an issue for them. Like, they can take a fellow uh, campaign. It will not be the end of the world. They were still the best seller for their tennis shoes. They were doing well with, shoe with their tennis shoes, anyway. Um, it was affordable, so it was cheaper than competition. And it's still, actually, way cheaper than Nike or um, Puma. Maybe not cheaper than Adidas. So now let's come to the weakness uh, for Reebok. Actually, it does not, Reebok does not have much international uh, presence. I, I've never heard of Reebok before coming to the United States. However, everyone knows Nike, everyone knows Adidas, mm, and Buma, but actually not Reebok. Arena, not Reebok. Uh, as we mentioned before, inconsistency, rapid fluctuation in their personality, in their message. Uh, we mentioned that European uh, consumers did not understand their campaign. When you continue with SWOT analysis, opportunities, as we mentioned before, um, 1993 was the year where um, most of East Europe opened to the world. So you have in Germany alone 20 million more consumers. Uh, I mentioned this before, after the, uh, the end of Cold War, especially in Europe and China actually, um, the US, pro US made products were favorable, like people preferred US made products, it was combined like the image of it combined with luxury and quality. One third thing that's very specific for sport products that uh, in 1993, the sport video games start to become more popular. Yes. Um, competition, as we mentioned, uh, globally, Reebok is not as powerful as Nike, Puma, or Adidas. They are very well known internationally, not as much as Reebok. Um, we mentioned that it is affordable, yes, but uh, it sits in a very strange place. Uh, it is affordable, but not to Eastern Europe's, not to Eastern Europeans. Uh, yes, they are like up into the world now, but they are still coming out recently from a um, communist regime, and everything that produced outside of Eastern Europe was way too expensive for Eastern Europeans, except for money laundry people. Um, and for the rest of Europe, well, the market was already satisfied with other companies who have been there first. And now after understanding the market and understanding Reebok, let us rely on what we have learned already to find some alternative plans. Here we came up with three, and definitely you can come up with more. First, rely on local um, marketers who can understand local markets a little bit more. So as much as uh, Reebok is relying on local distributor, which worked perfectly, it should rely more on local marketers. We mentioned this as well. Expand to different raising market, uh, thriving market, like in Asia. Uh, some countries are around the world, like most people, did not even hear about Reebok, uh, where you cannot find anyone who did not hear about Adidas, for example, or Nike. Focus on technology, as we mentioned when we were talking talking about video games. Focus on technology to 
and have more persistent, unique campaign. Okay? Here in the course of action, we will talk about the third one, focus on technology. Um, so, as we mentioned before, uh, starting at early age, sorry. Starting at early age group is essential, especially when you want to utilize video games. So create brand loyalty at early age, which was big thing in the 90s. There was more brand loyalty than today. Associate certain body characteristics with your product, like um, slim muscular body or like built uh, bodybuilder, heavy weight lifter body. Choose one and stick with it. So whomever in their head like this image will start using your products because they feel they look like that. Um, associate this is very important in Europe. This is crazily uh, important in Europe. Associate your product with a certain athlete. Like um, have uh, one or two or three soccer players uh, running your advertisements, uh, wearing your products all the time, uh, wearing your products in, on the field or uh, at interviews. Uh, this pays a lot in, um, let's say, soccer countries uh, because, well, soccer play players are big stars there. What went wrong in, uh, what do you think went wrong in uh, Planet Rebook and how you can fix it? And I know it's impossible, but please try to, as much as possible, stick to 1993 standards. Like, this campaign has been launched in 1993. We cannot use today's standard. So how we can fix it, how have we been there at that time? Uh, what kind of marketing mix you recommend to Reebok? Feel free here to use um, 1993 or today's standard because it's very open question. Again, this 1993 and this choose any time you want. Thank you very much. This was Bashar Yassin, Reebok Plex.